This fleet equipment unscripted interview is presented by Hendrickson, a leading manufacturer of heavy-duty suspension systems and components to the global commercial transportation industry. Visit hendrickson-intl.com to learn more. Hi everyone, Jason Morgan, editor of Fleet Equipment. Welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. Clearly, we're doing something different today. We're with the newly announced and launched Peterbilt medium-duty lineup. We have walk-arounds of the vehicles. We're in them. We're driving. Come along. Let's take a look at some of the vehicle details. Uh, get our hands on the new trucks outfitted with the new TX8 transmissions and see what we can learn. Come along. Peterbilt brought a bevy of medium-duty trucks outfitted for various applications to tool around the Texas Motor Speedway. More specifically, the newly unveiled Model 537 and Model 548 designed for Class 7-8 segments, as well as the medium-duty Model 535 and Model 536 designed for the Class 5-6 non-CDL lease and rental markets. They were outfitted with the new 8-speed Packard TX8 automatic transmission that monitors changes in road grade, vehicle acceleration, torque demand, weight, and engine load. It definitely provided a smooth ride in the various body configurations around the test track. Phil Hall gave us a walk around of the Peterbilt Model 536 Class 6 truck. One of the things that, uh, you know, from a durability side that we're very proud of is that our stainless steel pro mesh, right? Because no matter where you're going in the city or on the highway or a construction site, you're going to get road debris kicking up and hitting the, hitting the ground. Uh, and we want to protect that vital engine component. So it's, it's really durable and tough. I mean, you know, you do that with a, the composite grill screens, they're going to crack and break. And, and over time with plastic, as you know, with the UV rays, outgassing and everything else, that plastic tends to fade, get chalky, become very brittle. You don't have to worry about that with a Peterbilt, right? Regarding the headlights, it's a halogen headlight, a high-performing headlight. Now, I want to tell you, you know, we looked at the lighting studies and the light tunnels so when they do the validation testing for these headlights, right? They have a, wind, uh, they have a, a light tunnel uh, in Germany. It's about a quarter mile long and they shine the light down. And I saw the video, I saw the uh, photographs, and I was like, we're doing an LED headlight? Are you serious? Because there's it's so there's a, a distinct crisp line, the horizontal and the vertical planes. And I'm like, that's an LED, right? He's like, no, that's, that's our new halogen light. I'm like, how did you, how were you able to do that? And he's like, we did a lot of engineering in the parabolas and the, in the light physics, and the shape and geometry behind it. It's all in the reflectors. So any high-performance headlights, it's not necessarily the bulb, it's all within the, uh, the reflectors and how they're engineered, how the, the, the angles and everything works because that light is magnified and compounded and then that projects out, right? One of the other things that I love about this hood is that if you notice, it's really short. Very, very steep uh, slope and that was great, uh, designed for visibility. So when, you know, in, in the urban environments or in, or in, the, in the yards, you know, there's tight corners and everything else. We want the driver from that productivity side to feel like he's comfortable in control of the vehicle. So if you're familiar with our 330 model, imagine that hood crown was sitting up here. We dropped the six and a half inches. And that six and a half inches provided an additional two and a half feet of more, uh, better visibility. From the cab side, from our current 1.9 to a 2.1 meter cap, eight inches wider. That's tremendous. And then from a the length side, six and a half inches greater than what we had today. Now, this roof here, we have two roofs. We have the curved roof, and if you see that Terex truck right there, that's the flat roof, right? Now, that flat roof was specifically designed for overhead equipment. For that equipment, boom, they had that clearance for their strobe lights, marker lights, and whatever they needed to have on top of horns and all that. So we, what we did was we lowered that cab three inches lower to the rail. And then we created a flat roof. Now here's the beauty of it. That flat roof, if you were to go in our current 330 truck with the curved roof, it has the same headroom as that flat roof. And if you want four inches more headroom, you get the curved roof. Another cool thing is this has a two, uh, two passenger 
uh, as a side seat, so it makes it a three-person seating. I can get into my storage unit in here. Large volume of storage. Very easy to use, very comfortable. A lot of storage right here, a lot of leg room. It's definitely for three persons, and we tested this interior out with 95 percentile and 5 percentile uh, male and female to ensure that the meat clearance, the ergonomics is very comfortable for them. You know, a lot of places, you know, uh, uh, trucks out there that have three person seating, you have something always hitting your knee, right? A cup holder, a center console, a ram out or something that's going to interfere. We specifically designed this interior to comfortably sit three people. Now steps, aggressive pattern when you get down here. Your foot doesn't move, it doesn't slip, right? So this was designed for ice, snow, wet weather, mud, so that way you don't slip, right? Because any time you get on, get in and out of the truck, when you hit that shin or the ankle, I tell you what, you get, you know, it upsets me when every time I do it and it hurts. And also from the safety side, we got a neural grab handle, the steering grab handle, and also it's deep 10 on the side, on the back side. So that's for good, great for ripping from a glove standpoint, as well as in the, in the wet, uh, wet weather conditions. When I talk about the quality and durability of our cabs, this cab is all aluminum, the firewall is steel, and then the structure is extruded aluminum. And so it's a very solid, tight fit. Now, when you get in an interior, and why it's important, because over time, with any type of plastic, heat and temperature, plastics expand and contract. And every time those Tinderman clips, they move and all that over time, they're going to start squeaking and rattling. So that if, if the parts are shifting and moving around, that's because of the bone structure of the cab. So our cross member beam is mounted to a solid structural cab. And then that what that does allows for tight fits, fit and finish and to the quality and durability. And as well as you got a solid cap, no rattle, no squeaks, but also it shuts very nicely. Going to the cap, the door pad here, one of the other things is you've got a kick plate. So every time you get in on the cap 50, 60 times a day, a lot of folks, they use, sometimes use their foot. Keep that door open, especially on a windy day, maybe the wind's blowing, you're on an angle, the door might swing back, do you want to use your foot to prop up? On my current car that I have, my wife's car, she's really mad at me because there's a scuff mark on the, on the map pocket. Well, this one here is a stainless steel option they can get, and if they, you know, from a customizability, they can unscrew these off, they can powder coat it, or they can do the hydro forming or the hydro print, make whatever they want, but it's made for durability. It's not going to break, it's not going to crack, right? What I love about this, multi-position uh, uh, multi steering wheel, it's tilt and telescoping. So when you release the lever there, it floats. Very easy to move and manipulate in the exact position what you want. And all you do is lock it down. The trucks that you're going to be driving are equipped with our new TX8 transmission. The great thing about that is what we're hearing from the field and from our customers that it drives like a car. It's smooth. And what I found out when I drove it, I drove this truck from Dallas to Denton. And one thing I noticed is that it will uh, select a start gear that's optimal from the weight. It, 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 it can calculate your angle, the slope of the road, so it selects the first gear, so it doesn't immediately go into first gear. You may start off in second or third gear. And so that's great for the cargo, right? Protecting that cargo, preserving it, as well as from a driver comfort standpoint. So a lot of a lot of our trucks in the past and, and some of our competitors, they start in immediate first gear. What happens, you step on the gas and then you're jarring like this. It's like a bucking Bronco, and it's uncomfortable, right? This is 250, 230 pounds, and that cup holder. It's strong, it's durable. I mean, that's the quality we're talking about. We wanted this truck to survive multiple, be used for multiple life cycles. This is not a single 
cycle truck. And that's one of the things that we wanted, that we carried over from a Peterbilt that, that 95% are still in service. With this truck, we're aiming for 100% to keep those trucks in, um, in service.